Are you looking for an athletic scholarship? You're in the right place. This is the Recruit Me Athletic Scholarship Podcast, the longest running podcast on recruiting and athletic scholarships. We're here to help your family navigate the recruiting road all the way to an athletic scholarship. He's a recruiting expert and a dad of two college athletes. He has a wealth of experience to share. Here's Recruit Me CEO, Brent Hanks. Welcome to episode 338 of the Athletic Scholarship Podcast. I had the opportunity to interview Amy Sappington about the ACT test. Amy is a math teacher and is in her fifth year in teaching the ACT prep class at my hometown high school, Ozark High School in Ozark, Missouri. This is part one of a two-part interview with Amy. This episode will introduce Amy, her background, and her family. She will explain that not only does she teach ACT prep at the high school, but she also tutors and teaches ACT strategies outside the classroom. Amy will tell you how she got into tutoring and then lay out the basics of the ACT test. We will cover why a high school student should take the ACT and when they should take it. You can get more information about the actual test at ACT.org. Now let's get into part one of the interview with Amy Sappington. Amy, tell the Recruit Me families about who, uh, about you and your family and your job and your background. Uh, this is my 23rd year in education. I teach at a Ozark High School, which is a school that has around 1,800 students, grade 9th or 12. Um, I've taught uh, classes from 9th grade, Algebra 1, all the way up through pre-calculus. Uh, this is my fifth year to teach the ACT prep cl- class here at the high school. On, in that class, I, I mainly focus on math and science. Right now, I teach Algebra 2 and Honors Algebra 2. My family, my husband's an educator. He was elementary principal for years, and now he works as a, a curriculum director for the elementary. I have two kids, uh, one that is a senior at Missouri State. He's getting a, a degree in corporate finance, and the other is a medical student. She's in med school. And so that's really kind of how I got started in ACT tutoring. My daughter was starting uh, to apply for scholarships and wanting to get into an accelerated medical program. And so she started looking at how you could study and really overcome and kind of almost beat the ACT by uh, doing different strategies on the different tests. And so once she started doing that, I thought, hey, there's a a good market for this. And kids really, even the smart kids don't know how to take this test. And so that's kind of how I really got interested and almost kind of obsessed with, you know, trying to teach kids how to, to beat the ACT. Is there anything else like on your ACT tutoring? You kind of told why you got into it with your daughter and stuff, but there is there anything specific about it or any details that you want to share? I'll just kind of you know talk about what I do whenever I tutor with a kid. Mainly, I'm I'm just math and science. They'll have to you know find somebody else for the English and reading. But with math, we spend a good amount of time on content because really math is the only test that really is content based. Everything else is almost just test strategies. Math, I would say, is probably the hardest test for a kid to increase their their score on because you either know the math content or you don't. So I spend a lot of time going over content and reviewing things that they already know. Geometry is usually tough for kids because they take it pretty young. Uh, So with the math, we cover some content and then we I'll give them practice tests and they'll take those home weekly, practice the pacing You know, the way uh, school is kind of ran these days, good or bad, it's all a mastery of content and not really the the timing. Most public schools now go to, you know, kids can take as long as they want for a test and, and those types of things. So kids aren't used to having to pace themselves when testing. So we practice a lot of that during the session. I'll, I'll tutor with kids typically one hour a week. And some kids I've, you know, tutored an entire year. Some kids find me two or three months before the test and we only tutor for that amount of time. So kind of depends on where the kid's at and how many points they want to go up on their test. But they really have to do some work outside of uh, whenever you're tutoring them because they got to go and really want to do oh, it. Yeah. I, I think I had one that was pretty good at doing his stuff and one that we had to kind of push just a little bit. Right. Yeah. You know, I tell the kids just because your parents pay me or just because you're an ACT prep class doesn't mean your score is going to go up. You have to do the work. You know, I I can sit and watch you work or you can go do the work and come back and we can talk about your results and how to improve. You know, so it's just like on the athletic field can watch 
somebody make a free throw, but if I go out, don't practice myself, it's not going to stick in the memory and the muscle memory and all that good stuff. So you can really relate it to so much in the sports world. Practice, practice, practice the way you want to perform. And uh, until kids buy into that, they, they really don't improve. Just like with sports, I mean, it pays off. You know, I just tutored with a boy that started with the 14. He needed an, an 18 to get into college. He was an athlete and he got it up to a 19. You know, I start with kids that have a 21. They'll go to 29. Time to go, time to change class. Yeah. So you really can, you really can see a lot of improvement if the kid is willing to put in the work. And that's, you know, bottom line with anything you do. Well, and I always say you're only good at what you do. Yep. Practice, practice on anything. So. Well, and I think uh, Parker, he took an a, he took an ACT tutor before you got started, and then Sutton, my younger one, I think he got to use you, and and uh, yeah. before he took his first test, and even after he took his first test, you kind of told us, you know, uh, why you do it and how you got into it. Can you give us the basics of what an ACT test is? So the ACT is four parts: English, math, reading, and science. And then there's a fifth test, a writing test that some kids take. Most kids that stay in the Midwest, they don't need the writing test per se. Um, So they just do the four parts, English, math, reading, and science. And, you know, you say, you know, both of your boys used an ACT tutor. And really the ACT tutor is just, you know, teaching kids not necessarily content, but the strategy. Because both of your boys were, were smart. They just didn't didn't know the different types of testing that would be on there because it really is different than the way we test in school. Well, and I always say you're only good at what you do. So yep. practice, practice on anything. So, so yeah. if the ACT, if you have to put in so much work and it's, it's not fun to take, why, why should a su- student take an ACT test? Yeah, I, I think there's a lot of reasons. The ACT is really meant to pre- uh, predict if a student's college ready or not. I don't know if that's really true. Schools say that's why they use it. The reasons I think a student should take it is college admittance. And there's kind of a debate right now. I see students come in and say, oh, I'm going to go to this college and they have no minimum requirement anymore. So I'm not going to take the ACT. And maybe the school doesn't have a minimum requirement. But if, if you don't take the ACT, they can stick you in whatever classes they want to. So they might stick you in every preliminary course possible and you have to pay for those classes before you can actually take the classes that count towards your major. And I think that's something that a lot of kids don't understand. You know, they say, well, colleges don't require the ACT. And I think that's smart on the college's part that they get more money. You know, they can stick you into every introductory class that they offer in it and it doesn't have to count. So when kids tell me that, I, you know, I kind of just shake my head a little bit because they're kind of getting taken just a little bit. If, if you have a good entrance score, what it can do for you is you can bypass some classes and, and start with the ones that are really needed. It can also put you um, in a good place to get into competitive programs within the college. I know, for instance, my son having a certain ACT score, he was able to get into the business program in college based off of his ACT score. I know the education department at Missouri State, if you have a an average ACT score, you don't have to take their entrance test, which is a couple hundred dollars for the education program. So there's lots of, of good reasons. And probably the one kids use the most is scholarship. Your academic scholarships are based off of grades and ACT. The better ACT score you have, your grades don't have to be as high. So it's kind of a sliding scale on that. So lots of good reasons to take it. I can't think of any reason to not take it other than, you know, money. I know the state of Missouri has a thing. If you qualify for free and reduced lunch, you get free two a two free ACTs. So there are ways to to get around the financial part. And Amy, do you just tutor for ACT or do you do the SAT also? Yeah, I just do the ACT. There aren't really that many kids around here that take the SAT. So I those are mainly your East and West Coast schools that do the SAT. So the majority of our kids stay Midwest. So I really just do ACT. Do the students still take like a PSAT? Sometimes I'll see that. Yeah, they can take the PSAT. I believe I believe they take that around their junior year and it can help them qualify for a national merit scholarship. I don't know a lot about that, but I do not know that we offer it. And I think it's free through our school, the PSAT. Think- and they 
they offered, you know, practice ACTs to sophomores. But honestly, I, you know, I hear kids all the time say, well, I'm just going to take the ACT the first time to get a baseline score. And I think that's kind of silly to take it once for practice and pay for it. There's lots and lots of ACT books out there and a website where you can get practice ACTs. I tell the kids to practice one at home on their own. And then when they're paying for the test, go, go try to get the best score you can. Well, and I think Parker took a ACT like in eighth grade in like some Duke program. Is yeah, that still going on? Yeah, Duke, it's like, I think they target seventh graders. I don't know a lot about that or what that can do for somebody. I, I feel like it has something to do with recruitment you know, academic recruitment, but yeah, it is offered to some honor seventh graders. Well, he got a better score than I did whenever I was in high school. So that's, that's <laughs> I understand <it>. that. <laughs> I wish I would have known, you know, when I took it the first time, you know, I think we're pretty close to the same age, but it, it didn't really matter. It seemed like, you know, if you had a 17 or an 18, you I got into just had college. to get an 18 to get into Missouri state at the time. Yeah. And, and nobody cared. Yeah. If you got better than that, I don't remember there being scholarships for it, you know, but now if you mention ACT, kids know about it super young. They know that they've got to, to get with it and be competitive. So you kind of mentioned about the first time taking it. When do you suggest taking the ACT for the first time? Personally, I mean, I think a kid, if, if the parents can afford it, they need to take the ACT as many times as possible. I base everything off of math because it's the main test that's content so I think as soon as a student finishes, finishes Algebra 2, they should start taking it. In Ozark, the honors kids are mostly in Algebra 2 as sophomores. So I would say start taking it the summer of your sophomore year and take it as many times as you can through your junior year and the first semester of your senior year. If you're in Algebra 2 as a junior, I would wait and start taking it in December that year uh, because you really want to make sure you have the Algebra 2 content for the math test. Really, the math only goes up through trigonometry, and there's only three or four questions that are trigonometry questions. So a student doesn't need to be enrolled in that class, but it, it can be helpful. The seniors really need to have their best score by October, and that's the first test that's given in the fall. So you don't want to wait too long. You want to have your best score by October because you'll start applying for colleges and they'll start sending out acceptance letters in, in January. So you, you really can't wait too long into your senior year. We like to talk to uh, Recruit Me families and student athletes uh, as they enter their freshman year because your G GPA starts the first day of your of your freshman year. And so, oh, really, so you really have to start even thinking about what classes you're going to take and get with your counselor to try to get your mass in so you can start preparing for ACT type test and, exactly. and, and college and admissions. I, you may know more than me. But I believe that um, at least for Division One, kids have to have Algebra One, Geometry, and Algebra Two. Yes, they have to have core. There's core courses that they have to have. Right, yes. and I think it's, those are the three core maths because I know we've had kids try to take other things and then not be eligible in CAA. Really, you need to be in Algebra One if possible that freshman year to be successful. The, the science portion of the ACT is kind of all over the place. It's not like you have a set curriculum every single time. Sometimes you'll have more biology passages. Sometimes you'll have some chemistry passages, sometimes um, some physics passages. But what's interesting about the science is you don't necessarily have to know a lot about science. You just have to be able to read fast and look at graphs. A lot of kids don't understand that you don't have to know a lot of science content. In fact, the science test is only 40 questions and only four of those questions are content-based. So the rest of it, you should just be able to, to figure out by looking at the passage and looking at the, the charts and graphs. So when you say content-based, what do you mean? That means like a lot of times we'll see people need to know something about the pH scale or they might need some know something about cells or some particular science fact does that make sense? Yeah, my my so, luckily my really Ozark education remembers what the pH scale is, so that I, I feel exactly. good. <laughs> you only need to know science facts for four questions out of forty on the science test, which just seems crazy. You know, my sister teaches science, and that kind of drives her <laughs> her crazy because in those classes you could just be teaching them how to read charts and graphs and and decipher you know words. Really, the science is a reading test. Kids will ask me all the time, hey, I don't have a lot of time left. How? What can I do to rush and get ready for this test? And I say, read. 75% of the entire test is reading. English is a reading test. The reading section is a reading test. 
the science section is a reading test. And honestly, the math, they don't ever just give you a problem to work. It's some kind of scenario that you have to read about and form a problem out of that. So being a fast reader and somebody who can really get in and skim and pull out important facts, that's a huge, a huge factor. So if I was a freshman, I might not be taking the ACT yet, but I would start reading like 20 minutes a night, 30 minutes a night, whatever, because that's going to make you better on all four sections of the test. That 15 minutes went really fast, and Amy covered some great ACT testing information. Next week's episode, episode 339, will be part two of this interview. Amy will get into how to prep for the ACT and how the scoring and super scoring is done. You will get advice into what classes you need to take in high school and that taking the ACT is much like sports. Practice, practice, practice. Join me next Tuesday for another 15 minutes that will change your athletic scholarship future on the Athletic Scholarship Podcast.